Hello and welcome to our midweek services for the 22nd and 23rd of December. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us pray for peace for ourselves, our families and friends. And our first reading is from the Old Testament, 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 24 to the end. Hannah's prayer in the temple has been answered and she has a son. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an epfar of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading is from Luke 1, verses 46 to 56. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word 
and lead us to the living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Mary's song, often known as the Magnificat, spans the musical styles and the various liturgies and services of the church. It's part of evening prayer, where it's usually sung to a formal chant, and there are various hymns and songs based on it, including Tell Out My Soul. It is a song with a revolutionary message, and it uses an existing Jewish form. There are echoes here of Hannah's song in 1 Samuel 2, 1 to 10, which follows on from today's Old Testament reading and starts with the words, My heart rejoices in the Lord. And of course, is where Hannah is giving thanks for the gift of a son to her and her husband. The Magnificat links the Old and New Testaments with quotations and references to God's promises and of course Luke's Gospel with its account of the life of Christ shows how these promises are fulfilled in Jesus himself and in his actions and teaching about the Kingdom of God. The Magnificat is not a song about or to Mary, it is a song from Mary, a joyful shout of joy to God who does great things in people's lives. We can all join in with that, however we see Mary in the life of the church. The word translated in verse 26, 46 as glorify means to make great, to make larger in the Greek. Of course, God cannot be made great or larger, but it's how we perceive him as we reflect on his works and on creation. The background to this song is the newly pregnant Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth, who is also expecting a baby. Her child was to be John the Baptist. We are not told much about Mary by Luke. The angel Gabriel, we are told, went to Nazareth to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And that's it. Nothing about her age, what she wore, who her parents were. We learn far more about Elizabeth, albeit mostly in terms of her husband. Zechariah was a priest and Elizabeth would have had a high social status because of this. We hear of Mary going into her house, so she clearly had a home of her own. Yet this older woman greets Mary enthusiastically, clearly feeling very privileged that the mother of the Lord should come to her home and declaring her to be blessed. God's topsy-turvy world is seen in the choice of Mary to bear the Messiah and hailed by the Magnificat, where rulers are cast down and the humble lifted high, where the hungry receive good things, but the rich are sent empty away with nothing. God is pictured as the champion of the poor, the oppressed and the despised, and these changed priorities were continued by the son Mary bore. Jesus attaches no importance to what we have, how well off we are, what names we can drop. What is important to him and his father is our sincerity, our integrity, our commitment. Mary said that all generations would call her blessed, not in a proud way, but because she wholeheartedly accepted the gift God had given her. She was full of awe and wonder that the holy and mighty God had chosen her to give birth to the Messiah. And Mary knew how special Jesus was and would be. She was not surprised when he eventually announced he was the Messiah. She knew about Jesus' mission from before his birth. A lot would be lost if we did not have this account of Mary's visit to her cousin and the words of the Magnificat. In Mary's words, we see a foreshadowing of life in the kingdom. There is maybe a challenge to us too, to accept what God has given us by way of talents, resources and experiences, and to be obedient like Mary, prepared to see God at work and play our part and also to see the world through God's eyes with value attached to every human being, however poor or underprivileged. So this is a song from 2000 years ago, 
based on a still more ancient form. But when we look at the words, we see just how much they still speak to us and our world. We need a God who has a preference for the poor, who takes people who have nothing and brings them into the light, giving them precedence and power that the normal world simply doesn't understand. The world must continue to be turned upside down and we must be alert to the call and ready to be used in the process. Let's pray. Dear Lord, may we share Mary's joy as we have fellowship with others. May we share Mary's trust as she obeyed the Father's will. May we share in Mary's worship as we are reminded once again what your love looks like. Amen. And we affirm our faith. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And our prayers of intercession. Dear Lord, we pray for all your people around the world, no matter their colour or creed, language or diversity, as this Advent draws to a close, that they may know the importance of this week in all its earth-shattering fullness. May they see the immensity of your gift that goes on giving. We pray for those for whom Christmas will be especially hard through the challenges, changes and consequences of this past year and more. Those who have lost family or friends homes or employment, health and well-being, for those who feel life as they have previously known it, slipping away with uncertainty and insecurity. We pray for the thousands affected by catastrophic weather conditions, floods, rains, winds, storm, tornado, snow, for health and social services, their staff and clients, that in the midst of illness and need, in the midst of birth and death, in the midst of pain and distress, in the midst of their darkest and most worn out nights, the light of Christ may shine into their world. We pray for those who will travel this week or hope to travel, for those who will need to stay at home, for those visiting and those receiving guests, that they may be aware of each other's needs, especially in these Covid times. Give us all a sense of care and compassion, that we may comfort the distressed and show care for all. We pray for those who go above and beyond what is expected of them, those who show extra love and generosity, for the secret Santa givers and the food bank donors and organisers, for all who share the real Christmas story, the gospel message of life, love, joy and hope. And we pray for ourselves and our families and friends, whether we meet with them or not over the Christmas season. May we be a blessing to each other, sharing love, joy, hope, good news and gospel stories. These prayers and the prayers deep within our hearts, we offer you to you this day, Lord God. Amen. And our collect. Eternal God. As Mary waited for the birth of your son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. So a few notices. Our crib services have moved online, so will not be taking place in church on the afternoon of Christmas Eve. And they can be accessed from Christmas Eve afternoon on our YouTube channel, St Barnabas and St James the Less. We have our midnight service at St James at 11.30 on Christmas Eve and a Christmas morning service which will be Zoomed at St Barnabas at 9.30 on Christmas morning. And then of course the day after Christmas being Sunday we have our usual morning services 9.30 at St Barnabas, 11 at St James. There will be no Evensong and nor will there be midweek services on the 29th and 30th of December. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>